Friends, I bring you a reading or two, actually, this morning, starting with John 13, verses 34 and 35. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another, and by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And again in Matthew 22, 36 through 40, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love your Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Now, friends, you may not have been aware that over the past year, a small circle of our friends have joined together in a Bible study. About 11 people have been reading and reflecting on the Gospel of John. And I am so appreciative of this diverse gathering of friends who share a sense of the holy, who journey deeply into Scripture and a more personal relationship with the universal Christ. We have been working to understand what John is teaching us. You know of John's exhortation to form a beloved community found in John 13, 34 and 35, what we just read, or the great commandments to love God or love neighbor as in Matthew 22. These passages paint pictures of God's intentions for us. What I wonder is this, what is it that we intend to do? with God's intention for us. We've been able to also receive the blessing of Brad McHarg's leadership in a book study, a book written by Lloyd Lee Wilson on the gospel order as friends understand it. And Brad also lifts up the question, what are we to do? How do we form covenant community in real terms, in practical terms, in all love with one another? Is that our intention? As we head into this final week before Easter, we are nourished again by God's promise of a future. And we turn to the current challenges and look for the next faithful step to participate in God's promise. Where and with whom can we join in God's ongoing effort to make love manifest? The challenge for our discernment in this moment is to chart these next steps. The one we can see to take, and maybe the next one or two after that. Practical things. Being able to experience making the house ready for the Lord, literally ready for the Lord, as we have this wonderful building becoming refreshed, renewed, refurbished in so many ways. And one of my joys from the last year has been working together with all the various people building a strong and vibrant meeting amid a pandemic with each and every one of you participating in worship, small groups, the day-to-day -day operation of this meeting. That kind of courage and fortitude and joy has enabled us to grow during a very difficult time. We have learned as a community that no one can thrive as a lone worker. God calls us to be a covenant community, living and working to bring a world of peace and justice and right order. Jesus was teaching this same lesson to the apostles. Of course, the apostles were baffled at the teachings, and occasionally we are baffled by the teachings. Perhaps we think it's too hard, the standard is too high, we can't live up to that, that's somebody else's job, or some other story that we, we might manufactured, but the truth is sometimes we're just baffled. And today we are seeing beautiful ministry rising through this meeting in varied ways. And we are on the threshold of renewal, which can cause us to wonder which direction are we led to go. A central function of friends in this season is discerning how to focus our time. What will we do? What might our partners do? Who is doing something that can support and, and nourish our meeting? Who is doing something that we can support and celebrate through our ministries? And what can we postpone for now? 
Focusing on the next steps means that some excellent nudges or lead, leadings, while worthy of our attention and resources, may have to wait. We do what we can and support others in doing what we cannot. The Food Pantry right now is a great example, and Peace and Social Concerns Committee is discerning what to do about our real concern for food security within our meeting and within this community. Now, some questions that could prompt imagination in discerning the steps in front of us and the actions that we might follow include, what are we doing in response to the pandemic that is having a powerful impact? What results might rise from our work and the investment of our time and energy and resources? Ought we consider continuing it indefinitely? Why? What is required to maintain these levels of activity? Who needs to support it? What kind of resources are needed? What are our strengths in this season? Where have we been faithful? What gives us joy, life-giving joy? And how can the next steps sustain the opportunities for joy among all of those who are part of these ministries and who are part of our meeting, both locally in Greensboro and distantly? What opportunity or challenge have we recognized that needs to go fallow for a while? Which needs to be addressed? What can inspire us now that would till the ground for new activities? Finding the space to do the reflection I'm advocating might seem impossible, but reflection can come in many different forms. When I have been overwhelmed by the crush of work, sometimes generated by me, I'll admit, I look for time in the week to call a friend. We pray, we talk, we reflect. When I'm in a peer group that meets monthly and provides space for learning about our relationship with the earth and with food and with one another, we take time to walk. We take time to be alone with our thoughts and to write. These are moments in which we can lay down the burdens, examine them, and listen for the movement of God's spirit towards the future. In the book of Jeremiah, we are privy to an encounter between God and Jeremiah. I love the book of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, you might remember, is a Jewish priest, and he was chosen to share God's desire to restore relationship with the people of Judah, right relationship, covenant relationship through the creation of a new covenant. And for decades, Jeremiah shared God's message, but the people had a hard time listening. Today, the term diversity, equity, and inclusion are in our contemporary vocabulary. They weren't found in the Bible, but God's teachings are the epitome of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we consistently witness God's willingness to meet the needs of people in all walks of life through our ministries. And cultural competence is where God writes it in our hearts rather than on tablets, the desires of God's heart, as suggested by the second covenant. And I labor with the hope that others will understand that reconciliation is not only about repairing a relationship with your neighbor. Reconciliation is about restoring relationship with our universal Christ. We need to help each other with discerning what comes next. The short-term future includes more unknown and unknowable elements than we faced in decades, perhaps in over a century. I pray that we encourage one another in discerning our next steps as a meeting, just as we have encouraged one another in responding to the urgent challenges of this past year. So again, for your prayer, meditation, and for waiting worship, I offer these queries. What have we been doing in response to the pandemic that is having a powerful impact? And what results rise from our work and investments? What is required to maintain these activities? Who needs to support these activities? And what kinds of resources are needed?
What are our strengths? Where have we been faithful? What gives us life-giving joy? And how can we sustain offering opportunities for joy among all of those who are part of our meeting ministries? And what opportunity or challenge have we recognized that needs to be addressed? How can we acknowledge that some ground lays fallow and some ground will be tilled for the future? Thank you, friends. God bless you on this beautiful day.